let's get into today's teaching. Are we together? Luke 1, 30, 1 and 35. We're not going to be, I gave them probably 10 verses or 10 sets of verses, but we'll see. But it's for the next two weeks. Luke chapter 1, verses 31 and 35. And this is what the angel said to Mary. And he said, and behold, you shall conceive where in your womb. This is a natural womb, right? So what, what happens, we know what happens with conception. The seed from the man goes into the woman's body, into the fallopian tubes, and then the egg, and it, when, it is, um, when it germinates or whatever, it goes into the womb, and that's where the baby grows, right? It says, and you shall conceive in your womb, meaning that conception, there was a seed that was come from a father or a source. You shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Right. He shall be great, and he shall be called the son of the highest. So when we worship, guys, this is how the angel came to introduce Jesus. Not as another traditional or religious figure. It's like there's Buddha and there's Allah. No, no, no. This is what it says. It says, he shall be called great. He shall be called the son of the highest Lord, and shall give unto his throne the throne of David. So the angel came and said, this Jesus I'm bringing, this is how we know him in heaven. Many will know him as carpenter. <laughs> in heaven, this is his name. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and ever in his kingdom, guys. His kingdom shall be no end. I'm not giving you a baby. I'm giving you the creator. And then obviously Mary's like, yeah, nice hooters, I hear you, I hear you, but I can't explain. Wait. Mary's like, Amen, Hallelujah, glory to Jesus. But who say it? Who chased me? Mary said unto the angel, How can this be? Because Mary lives in a realm where to make someone pregnant, a male and a female must do something. How is this conception? When I am keeping myself pure, even for my fiance, until we get married. I see you, angel. I sense the presence. I hear what is coming. However, there are processes in this earth. Where's the seed coming from? Seeing I know not a man. Oh, when I was young, I didn't understand. Like, how does she not know a man? Doesn't she know an uncle? Or, uh, was dumb. <laughs> and then the angel answered and said unto her, check this. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. And the power of the highest shall overshadow you. This is custodians of glory, guys. Therefore also that holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called Son of God. What he's basically saying is the seed that comes. Because what does the seed do? The seed brings the nature of the Father. As good a man as Joseph was, guys. Joseph was a good man, Mary's husband. As good a man as he was, Pastor Brian. Jesus could not be born from his seed. Why? There would have been an element of corruptibility. If Jesus was the biological son of Joseph, Mary's husband, his father, when, <laughs> when Lucifer came on Matthew 4, just when Jesus' movie started, it would have ended. Because Lucifer is drawn to flesh. If he sends this nature of an earthly father in, guys, Lucifer would have stayed there until he found a way in. Because the fathers carry within them the seed that brings forth the nature. Jesus said, when you see me, you see my father. So God said, I'm not going to play with this thing. I tried it with Adam once. I'm not going to play with this. And that is why Cain killed his brother. Why? The nature of God was not in him, but the nature of Adam. And when life pressed, flesh came out. And, and, and therefore, that boy shall be called son of God of the Most High. So he said, I'm bringing a new Adam, a new man, that will bring my glory again and bring this. But this man cannot be filled with anything other than the Holy Spirit. So when we say, open yourselves up for the Holy Spirit, it's not for you just to speak in tongues and jump. and do, No, it's for you to carry a nature of incorruptibility. 
Because the Holy Spirit brings something Satan cannot overrule. Why? He is the son of the highest. You're getting the nature of the heavenly father. Where people used to, 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 to um, given at work, being nasty and rude and whatever. When not a church, because sometimes as church people, we can be rude and nasty. But when you have the Holy Spirit, and it transforms your nature, transforms your nature. And when people are used to you standing up in meetings and speaking your mind, you start speaking the mind of Christ. You cannot speak the mind of Christ without the Holy Spirit being present. The Holy Spirit in you is not for you to be religious. It's to be God-like. So Adam, when he sinned, when Adam was speaking to creation and giving guidance, he was God-conscious with the nature of the Father and the authority to... Whatever he speaks, it must be... Whatever Adam spoke, it was respected by creation. Guys, come on. There wasn't an animal that said, I don't want to be called lion. I want to be called Boso Yadi Boso. <laughs> but when they sinned, they stepped down from glory. And they became earth conscious. That's why the first thing they saw was, I'm not covered in my earthly jacket. Here you don't see it because the glory of God is on you. I'm clothed, yet naked. But they didn't see it. They were not ashamed when they spoke to the animals. And God stood behind them smiling, saying, this is my son. Guys, come on. Pastor B, come here quickly. Just face creation. You are Adam. Stand, stand in the trap. That's what you backslide. Stand This is God in heaven. Yahweh, King of Kings. God said, let us make men in our image and likeness and let them run things. Right? Many of us are run by people. And then we say it. Yo, I run me like a... This is God. <laughs> Rule. Our primary purpose for being created is not to worship. It's to rule. But because His nature is in us, we worship. It's a response to relationship. If we miss this, because many of us have lost our place, and then we sing, we're worshiping because we think it's our primary response. No, everybody can sing. You worship from this position. So when he spoke to, people, to whoever, creation, animals, whatever, they respect because they saw God, and I've dealt with this before. When he fell, he became just an ordinary man, cut off from God. The first Adam. The second Adam was to come and not make us church people that wear a certain way, that speak a certain way. Who is Jesus a man? No, it was to take us back. Come up. I'm not giving you what Jesus did with the lady. They, they said, um, we must crucify and whatever. And he said, him without son cast the first stone. He was not just covering her against the, the scorn of people. Guys, come on. Took her back. There were demons wondering, where's our house? <laughs> he said, the only thing, go now and sin no more. The moment you sin, you go back. Sit home. So that is the first Adam. And when, that's why the Bible says, in one, we get resurrection, and in another, we all sin. That's why we can read, for all have sinned. And fallen short of the glory of God. Now check this unfairness. You marry, you get a baby one day. That baby, because he not been, because of Adam, the son that's been chasing us, and Christ had to come to break that curse. We understand that, right? Right. Let's go. You will call the Son of God. Acts two verses one and four. We did it. And when the day of the feast of 50 days was fully come, fully means mature, that the fully year, brother given, was not decided by the apostles. God decides. When the Wednesday of my visitation was ready, I'm coming. Come on, guys, catch it. We don't decide the fully. You don't decide the day of a breakthrough. You decide your posture before God whilst you're waiting for your breakthrough. The full year speaks of heaven sanctioned the Holy Spirit to go. 
when it was fully come, they were all in one accord. We'll deal with this one day. This is not the determining factor. This is one accord. We can get uniforms and all look the same, Brother Greg, if our hearts are not knit together. We can stop lying about the blessing of God being on us. This is your house, your home. And suddenly, this suddenly was preceded by 33 years of preparation. What is suddenly? Suddenly, it's like something suddenly happens. No, 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 no. Look at every sudden in your life, there was something that happened. Suddenly, my family turned against me. Suddenly, my friends. Suddenly, suddenly. No, 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 no. You didn't suddenly lose your house. There were six months of you not paying and running from the bank. Every suddenly is prepared in isolation. And suddenly, there came a sound. And this is not it. That's why we can't now create, oh, when we sing that on Wednesday, this is the sound we sing and, and stuff happened. No, no, no. It's not about the sound. This is it. From heaven. Sound from heaven. Meaning that there was an uttering from heaven. Earth be ready. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Heaven is here right now. Check. And as a rush of mighty way, and he filled the house where they were sitting. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire and set on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Let's deal with this quickly. So Pentecost then is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So when we see in Acts chapter 2 verse 3 is what happened in Genesis 2 verse 7. Come over here. I'm going to use you a lot. This is Adam. Close your eyes. Handsome body, beautiful, no defects, nothing. No cancer, no flu, no sickness, nothing, but still dead. <laughs> alive. Open your eyes. Alive. But his nature is the nature of God. Right. He sinned, and this is what happens with us. When we sin, close your eyes. Spiritually, we're dead. We exist. We go to work. We do all these things. We go to parties, everything, weddings, whatever, whatever. We pay houses. We pay cars. We buy. What well, well, we're dead spiritually. Our eyes are closed spiritually. That's why in Ephesians, Paul, when he gets Revelation, he says that the eyes of your understanding... Be enlightened, filled with light. What is light? The presence and the purpose and the nature of God. Close your eyes. This is us in sin. And then they were all filled and suddenly, I need you guys to catch this. And suddenly there came a sound from where? Heaven. Where did God come from when he blew life into him? Heaven. So in New Testament, and they appeared unto them, hi man. And they were all filled, you see now, the China Sahuta. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, from heaven. We need to understand, we don't create the sound. We speak the sound we hear from heaven. So, Sir Geraldine and your team, get this. You don't create the sound. God creates the sound. You broadcast the sound as what? Satellites on earth, connected to heaven. Mighty rushing wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. The Holy Spirit came, Brother Greg, filled them. And instantaneously, all of them became like Adam before the fall. But check this. You know how their nature changed? Now his eyes are open. He's alive in God. Still sitting in the same small room. Still not having enough food. So the material did not change immediately. God can change it suddenly, but God is more interested in this. We chase God to change our material situations. And God says, I want to change you. And we don't get it, and we get frustrated, and we go back to sinning. And then we far from me, God, Father, forgive me, but he forgives you. Still not getting it, going back. Tori demon say, Yerra man, die kind spiel nou met ek en jy. When I joined a gang, when I was young, one of the first things we formed was our own language. One accord. Those guys, lost boys, they speak like this. This was our gang. We got nature. We all spoke the same. We dressed the same. We chased the same type of girls. Did the same type. Why? We are one in one accord. So the same spiritual thing that filled our group, filled individually, and we started developing a language. That's why in prison there's a language, Hoshu, Lekala, Kilikanjan, and all that. Why? It is not just something for them to speak above Hordens, because Hordens know it. It speaks deeper than that. There's another spiritual nature that has overtaken them. Let me show you. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues as if set on them. One of the first things they did when filled with the Holy Spirit was not Brother Greg's. Them healing people, it was. And they began to speak. That's why when you're born again, 
and it's been a couple of months, Ravel, you still can't come to youth and like, why your nature is or was supposed to be changed. I speak Jesus. Now it makes sense. It doesn't even have to be the obvious things like, Hosh, how, what, what are you speaking? You're just speaking defeat. I'll let, not get this job. Things are not working out. It means your nature because the Holy Spirit comes with fire. Even when you see a situation, you want to complain. When you open up, you say, Jehovah Jireh will make a way where there seems to be no way. He also said, the God who is more than blessed, Yahweh, I see you. Why? Your nature is changed. Out of the abundance of the heart. So when I keep on hearing you speak defeat, your heart is defeated. Before they went to touch people outside, they were touched on the inside. And they speak with other tongues. This is what the new man does. It speaks with other tongues as who? The Holy Spirit give them utterance. Mary coming there. Thank you, sir. Oh, oh, Sanjo, Pastor Vicky, come. This is Jesus in his mother's home. This is John in his mother's home, Elizabeth. The, their mothers are cousins. Check what the Holy Spirit, guys. This baby cannot speak, think, they might hear. That's why they say play music, especially classical music when you are. But they can't respond to this world. They are unconscious in the womb. Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit from the womb. Why? Because the seed was the seed of the Holy Spirit. Mary spoke. Full because the angel said, and the power of God will come over you. The power of the Almighty will overshadow you and it will fill you. When she spoke, an unconscious baby leaped. Because that is what the power of... It's not waiting for John to be 23. It leaped. And the fire shook, shook him. That spiritual consciousness. Don't care how dear the situation looks. Your problem is not your family member, it's you. Because you can only be a new Adam, old Adam. Did Jesus, new Adam, did he get persecuted? Yes! From people that were in the church. But the Holy Spirit not in them. Unconscious John. Spiritually conscious Jesus. Hello, my sister. In the spirit, I speak Jesus. And there was an immediate quickening because the Bible says the old Adam was a sinful man. The next one, the new one, Jesus, was a quickening spirit. Sit, we're going somewhere. Thank you, James. Ephesians 2 verses 1 and 2. Are we still custodians of the glory? Yes. Check. And you, he had quickened. What is quickened? Made alive. Right? Not if you are gefrek. Now you are not gefrek. No, no, no. This quickened here doesn't mean when you used to be slow, now all of a sudden you do things fast. No, it means you were dead and now you're awake. Right? That's on some. Because you go home now, you know us, especially our communities. The English we speak sometimes in public. Yo, came here, came here, came here. Came here. Can quicken it, quicken it, quick, quicken. <laughs> and you yet quickened. Check here. That were dead in trespasses. The Ephesians that received this letter, were they dead naturally? I still said you were dead. Conscious Jesus. Unconscious John. Why? Holy Spirit. He says, he had waken you up from what? The death of your sins. You were dead in your trespasses and sins. So now we understand what sin does, Red Gladwin. It's more than just giving us pleasure. It kills. It kills. Check here. Where in, the, in times past, you walked according to the course of what? This world. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. This is the crux. What is obedience? Obedience is when you get an instruction from authority that you submit under and you choose to disobey. That is disobedience. But now we know that disobedience now is not just what you do. It starts in the spirit. It says that works in the, the spirit 
that works in the children of disobedience. Why not the people of disobedience? Because you take on the nature of your father, whether Elohim or Lucifer. When you, when you choose to disobey God and take on the instructions of Satan, you are actually changing fathers in the spirit. Because it says, now you become a child of this. You are not a disobedient child. You become a child of the demon of disobedience. He's not so your pa. Just like your father. Why don't that look so nervous? <laughs> When I see Ntate, I see Tsepo. If you know his son, they are the same. Except Tsepo was wearing glasses from the age of eight months. I've never seen Tsepo without glasses. But jo jokes aside, they are the same. They speak the same. They are humble. They are quiet. They even walk the same. They look the same. Why? He is the nature of his father. Now, let's say I'm the spirit of disobedience. Come here quickly. Put you in Jesus' shoes. Then, just give him... Kick your pa, your natural pa. I know your pa, Rak. Your father gives you an instruction. Eh? He says, pull down your top. Tell him. Pull it up. So you're not listening to your father, right? Nia, klage prat. I must not klage disobey. No, even you keep on saying, pull down, pull down, pull down more, pull down. That's hard to pull down, pull down. Check. According to the prince of power of the air, this is the second heaven, the spirit that now works in. Spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. When he keeps on disobeying you, it keeps on giving me power is disobedience. This is my son. And the thing about children, they always look for validation from fathers. That's why when you're an absent father, don't get narr when your lighty goes hang out with a gangster. We are made to look for fathers. And there's nothing you can do. Can he hit him just slightly? Because you're addressing the surface. My hold on him is inside. So when child, children are disobedient and you know they're disobedient, don't call it cute. You are saying to the, far, the disobedient spirit, you are saying to him, it's fine, take him. It works in them. The Holy Spirit came away in them. Why? To deal with disobedience inside of them, break the power, and then change their nature. That's why Paul and John, when they used to write, they said, little children, meaning that we are of the same Father. Jesus came, he didn't say, our God who sits in heaven. He said, our Father, saying that when you pray this, it is nature relating to this God that made all things. Guys, you are not just here to go through earth to pass. You are supposed to own this thing. The earth is the Lord and the fullness of the earth and they that dwell in. And this God that made everything says, I will trust you with your infallibilities. Just obey. And what will make you rule this will give you glory. For you have crowned him with glory and honor. The new man. Are we learning something? Ephesians 4 verses 22 to 23. Near 23 to 24. Oh my God. Jim Elisa Engels. Kalisina can Polka spill it. Check. And it says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed where? In the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And you put on the new man. What is putting on? It's an intentional thing to clothe yourself. Come on, guys. It says, now you are naked. Now, Jared, you're in sin. You are naked. Put on the new man, meaning cover yourself, not just covering your sin. Put on the new nature, which is who? Who is this? Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. This creates the sudden lease. This prepares us to live like this. You want to be a custodian of glory, but you still want to be yourself. You cannot. You have to die to self or not. You know what sacrifice is? What worship is sacrifice, pastor? It's like when you sacrifice everything and you say, Father, I give you all of me. And then people speak with a stone and you worm and you keg you also. And then God said, we must sacrifice. You know what happens with sacrifice? 
before, and then we say, you provide the fire, I provide the sacrifice, fill me. And we feel so nice and we feel God is here and God looks at us, look at these fools. You know why? Before the fire came on the altar, the animal had to be dead. You refuse to die to self, but you say that the fire must come. The fire don't come, it's disorder. The fire don't come when the animal is still kicking. Kill first. I see your blood, which is representative of you. Then the blood of Jesus raises you, and then the fire comes, the Holy Spirit. And on them appeared what? Cloves of what? Fire. As a sign that the Holy Spirit has come in heaven, approving that you've walked according to order, discipline, and principle. Because when God looks down, why would God burn an animal that refused to die? You don't want to die. Worship is when I choose. I say, when they let Jesus, they said like a lamb to slaughter. Did he fight? No, he didn't fight. I am knowingly, willingly laying down my life. They don't, they're not taking it. I'm giving it up. Many of us, we don't want to give our lives up. We still want to be cute in church and do all these things and say the fire of God touched me. did not touch you. Maybe someone else's that was too strong and maybe you just felt the heat. When the fire hits you, it means all your flesh has been consumed. So some. And sometimes these teachings, they sound hard, but we need to get there. If you are still alive and kicking on the altar, God will not bring the fire. Then it means there's a strange fire, a deceptive spirit that is leading the church. I hope we're learning something. We're almost done. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 22. After this, we'll continue next week. For in, as in Adam, this is the first Adam, we all die. Now we know this dying is not a natural death. Because he sinned, and we all had his nature. All die, even so in Christ we shall all be made. <laughs> Genesis 2 verse 7. That's on some answer. Guys, you have the idea that you're catching this. You need to understand the word. Last one, Jared, for today. Same chapter, verses 45 to 50. Remember when Adam fell, um, they saw that they were naked, right? Check this, Pastor B. And so it is written that the first man, Adam, now it makes sense in Ephesians when it says, put on the new man. The first man, Adam, was made a loving soul. <laughs> the last Adam, which is Jesus, when you go and study, this is Jesus, was made a quickening spirit. That's why when you're made after the nature of Jesus, you are able to prophesy over dry bones. Now we become religious and we, we, we read Ezekiel 37 and say dry bones come to life and whatever. You, are, you cannot, it will not come to life because you are still here, a loving soul, but you are not a quickening spirit. When you get the nature of the last Adam as a custodian of the glory, now we can speak to dead things. We can speak to the valley of dry bones. But now we speak, we speak, and the valley is not responding because all they see is a loving soul, but they don't see the power of the Holy Spirit in you to quicken things. That's why Jesus would come to dead things and dead people and say, wake up, why? And in them, why? He was a quickening spirit. And teaching like this takes off the mask, who we really are. Does it make sense? Verse 46, how be it? How be it? It, it, it actually sounds sarcastic. It's how be it is like, who can you for me? He says, that's what how be it means. Paul said, how be it that was not, the first was spiritual, but that was natural, your angles. And afterward, that which is spiritual, it will make sense now. The first man is of the earth, earthy. That's why in Ephesians chapter 4, we read, it says, when you walked after the course of this world, this fallen world, earthy there speaks of that you are still prone to be directed or whatever by this earth and its feelings and stuff. The second man is from heaven. And suddenly there was a sound from where? Guys, come on. <laughs> and suddenly. So... Unless the Holy Spirit from heaven fills you, we are here. Putting on the new man, primary to that is that the Holy Spirit from heaven fills you. Not just to speak in tongues. Not just to prophesy or the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We all, all what gifts, we don't want the fruits, but that's a topic for another day. But that you become this man every single day of your life. 
The second one is the Lord from heaven. As the earthy, such as they also are earthy, as is the heavenly, they are also heavenly. Kom ons gaan goed terug hierso. This when you study it in context, it says, and those of the earth, their nature are like this. And those that are heavenly, don't tell me you're heavenly. I will know you're heavenly by your fruits. Your nature will tell me where you're from. There's certain people you didn't know which, which township they grew up in. You could just see. This one is violent. I don't want to say it, but this is Westbury. This. And the others would come and they're very arrogant and bragging like this. Bosman or elders. And Tukis. <laughs> but you see, does it make sense? That's why Paul said, how be it? How be it that you guys claim to be heavenly? But all I see, it's earthy. How be it? How be it that you are still walking in the old man claiming to have the benefits of the new Adam? How be it? You are earthy. He's veralds. No, I'm, I'm made in the image. I'm like, no, 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 you know the verse. You are not the verse. How are you the verse? When I can see it in your life. As, and as we have been born, born means to come from, to beget, born the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now Paul comes and says, even when we are here, we can go back to Genesis 1.26. Let us be men in our image. And likeness. Last one. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither do corruption inherit incorruption. Are we done? There's another verse I need to read. I need to read before we go. 2 Corinthians 4, verses 16 and 18. 2 Corinthians, this is the last one. Second Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 16 verses 18. Well, 16 to 18, sorry. There we go. Check this. We're done with this. Wherefore I beseech you. No, that's not the one. 2 Corinthians. Yo, I almost made you guys Bushiriites, Shutaites, <laughs> be followers of me. And these guys, the first thing they want, they will not say, take on my nature, what else? And I bring you pay. And you run. Hey, go deep, my papa. It goes deep into your pockets. Deep. <laughs> Ooh, you run crazy. For which we faint not. But thou, our outward man, perish. Yet the inward man is renewed when? Day by day. That's why you see even old people that serve God, they seem to become healthier. Because why? Outside. Yes, there's the pains and what? Mama Sana, but inside. When you speak to them, they hardly complain. Why? They don't serve the God of Google and YouTube. <laughs> they serve the God whose face they seek and see. They don't have the technology to put on like we can put on sermons and we can... No, no, no. They go onto their rooms, close the door, say, Yera, Father, make a way. Save my children. But that's not where I want to get it. Next verse, 15. So 14, 15, and 16. So it's 17 now. No, what did I say? No, 16, 17, 18. Apologies. Check. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. Now we're getting to a place. Last verse. Verse 18. Check. Then we're done. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Right. Next week we'll deal with it. Let me read the last verse because it is caught up here. Second Corinthians 5, verses 1 and 3. But I gave it to you now. Let's just finish with it. This is putting on the new man, right? While we Second Corinthians 5, quickly. I gave it to you guys. 5, verses 1. 
to 3. For we know that this earthly house, all your body is, is a house. When you don't look after your, your spirit man, feeding it the word of God, praying, get, getting counsel and do, do all these things. What you're basically doing is painting your house but not cleaning it on the inside. So we'll see a nicely painted house with nice lawn and even a fountain. And when we go in, it stinks, it's dirty, there's cockroaches, there's mice, there's lice. Why? That is what we look like in the spirit. Pastor, you can't say, no, that is here. Yeah, for it's an earthly house. Now it's getting deeper. It's a tabernacle. What is a tabernacle? Temple. Don't you know that your bodies are what? Temple of the Holy Ghost. That is why we have bodies for the Holy Spirit, not for six pecs. It's nice to be healthy and fit, but that is not all that is to you. When this body is dissolved, we have a building of God, a house that is not made with hands. Eternal way. That is the new man. Eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be what? Guys, to be clothed, the earnestly desiring. I cannot desire for you. Earnestly desiring to be clothed. Meaning that you cannot desire to be clothed, Pastor Brian, when you are not naked. To be clothed upon with our house, which is from where? Heaven. That is where the new man lives. When they sinned and their eyes were open, Genesis 3, and they saw that they were naked. When we go deeper, it's not the physical one. Where you now try to picture what Adam and Eve, no, 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 guys, how up flesh is. The glory departed and all they could see was just earthly bodies. And now we come and say, we don't want to be like Adam and Eve that fell. We want to be clothed with our house, which is from where? Heaven. Last verse. If so, that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. This is Paul. The Bible says Paul physically did not look handsome, all these things. But Paul was not worried about what his house, the temple looked like. But what does, he says, if we are clothed, for we groan earnestly. What is groan? It is deep within. It is within you. Groaning, earnestly desiring to be clothed. Cover me, Lord, because I'm naked. Cover me. Cover me with your grace. Cover me with your glory. Cover me. I cannot be saying I'm custodian when I'm naked. Because on this house, which is from where? Heaven. And when God came in Acts chapter 2, brother given, He came to give, give them the nature of the new man. But through what? Through the <laughs> Holy Spirit. Now we understand the Holy Spirit is not for us to just go on like mad people. Come on, guys. We <laughs> earnest desire to be clothed, meaning that we acknowledge that we're naked. Upon a house which is from, that's why the sound came from heaven in X. Not from, from, from the mind of whoever wrote the book of X, not from the apostles. The sound comes from heaven. The house must from heaven so that you can live heavenly. So once we are clothed, we shall not be naked. 